We're now going to look at the counterpart of the hydration of alkynes. We're going to look at the hydroboration oxidation. And like alkenes, this is going to follow anti-Markovnikov selectivity as long as you have a terminal alkyne. That's going to give us one product, which will be an aldehyde. Internal alkynes, because there's no selectivity, you'll get one or two products, which will be ketones. If the alkyne is symmetric, you just end up with one product, meaning you have the same thing on both sides of the triple bond, so say two ethyl groups. Both sides of the triple bond are equivalent, so you'll just end up with one product. If it's unsymmetric, you'll get two products. So that would be something like maybe a methyl and an ethyl, different things on each side of the alkyne. Remember from our discussion of alkenes that the hydroboration oxidation is a two-step procedure. So we're going to have in step one, we'll add BH3, which may be written as a THF complex. In step two, we'll add NaOH, and H2O2 to oxidize the boron to an OH group. Let's look at an example. We're going to take, this is called phenylacetylene, and we're going to add borane to that. And this goes through a syn addition, where the H and BH2 add syn across the double bond. So if we want to write the mechanism, Let's just draw the hydrogen near the more substituted carbon bonded to BH2 near the less substituted carbon. And when we draw in curved arrows, the pi bond attacks the boron. The bond between the B and the H will come down here and add to the more substituted carbon. So this goes from the alkyne to the alkene. We still have the phenyl group. We still have the original hydrogen, and now we've added BH2 on the less substituted side and H on the more substituted side, and those do add syn on the same side. From there, we'll add the oxidizing agents, NaOH and H2O2. So we won't cover the mechanism for this step, but just suffice it to say that this oxidizes a BH2 to an OH. So now when we draw the product, we end up with an enol. I'm going to leave the hydrogen implied now and not draw them in. So here is our enol. And then we know that enols tautomerize. So this will tautomerize and we'll do that by making the double bond a single bond and the OH a double bond O. And we're done. We have an aldehyde product. You don't have to, but you can draw the hydrogen on the aldehyde if you want. Here we have a couple of examples. And in this first one, we have a terminal alkyne meaning we're going to get anti-Markovnikov selectivity. So that means when we add the reagent, we're going to end up with a hydrogen on the more substituted carbon, and after the oxidation, we'll end up with an OH on the less substituted carbon. So let's draw the enol that results. We go from the triple bond to a double bond, and we add a hydrogen here and OH here. And then we just need to do the tautomerization. When we tautomerize, I'm going to get rid of the double bond and make the OH a double bond O. And there is the aldehyde product. 
So when you have the terminal alkyne, you end up with an aldehyde product. In this next example, we have an internal alkyne. That means there's no selectivity. So when we do the hydroboration oxidation, we can add the hydrogen to one side, the OH to the other, and then vice versa, add the OH to one side and the hydrogen to the other. So I'm going to draw two enol intermediates, and we'll have the phenyl, a double bond, and then connected to that double bond, we have three carbons. So there's one, two, three. And I'll add the H and the OH. So those do add sin, which is why I drew this cis double bond. If you mistakenly drew it as trans, it's not going to affect your final product. The other product we'll get is going to be the same alkene. But now we'll have the H here and OH here. When we tautomerize these, I'm just going to draw this as a straight chain. So we'll have phenyl, one, two, three, four, five carbons. Like that. And then phenyl, carbon one, carbon two will be the O. So there's phenyl, carbon one, carbon two ends up as my double bond oxygen. Okay, if you want to number this just to make sure you're keeping track of things, that's totally fine. We have that. The O is attached to carbon three and six total carbons in the chain. We'll do the same thing to the other. And just to show you, you don't have to draw it as a nice zigzag structure. It's still totally correct if you keep it how we have it. So if you kept it like this and drew in your double bond O, that's equally valid. Now one interesting thing to this is because there's no selectivity, these are the same products you would get if you subjected this internal alkyne to the hydration conditions. So if we took this alkyne and added acid and water, you would end up with the exact same products.